On paper, these two bikes have a lot in common, and visually too. We have the Trek Slash and the Norco Range. Only $300 separating the two with the Norco slightly dearer, these two big long travel 29ers we put head to head. So who would want a long travel 29er like these two? These two monster bikes aren't here to mess around, nor are they here to make your riding experience comfortable. They are built to go damn fast on wild terrain and have to be ridden aggressively, preferably on technical fast and steep trails. When you're talking 160mm travel on a 29er, you end up with a pretty big bike. Realistically, these are only one small step away from the modern downhill bike. Whether you are after a burly enduro race bike or a hard charging big mountain rig, these two could be your pick. Now let's take a look at some of the key differences between these two bikes. There's a lot of similarities, but there's a lot of points of difference too. The Norco is a very impressive bike for the cash. With the SRAM Eagle drivetrain of being a real standout, we've got the super deluxe rear shock at the back, big burly Lyric on the front, and of course the Maxxis Minion tyres give the bike a whole lot of traction. With the Trek, the Slash is stacked with frame features, notably its gargantuan frame tubes and huge front end, and subsequently the knock block system to stop the fork crowns and bars from spinning around and contacting the top tube. There's a little bit of frame geometry adjustment here too, with the Mino chip system. Interesting a spec choice we don't see much of is the RockShox dual position fork. You can drop the suspension down from 160 mils of travel to 130 for a lower bar height and a sharper steering on the climbs. How did these two bikes fare on the trail? Well, there was actually very little in separating these two once we took to the dirt, but there were some differences. On the climbs, the Trek suspension felt a little sprightlier and with its faster rolling wheels and dual position fork, we had a better climbing experience than we did on the Norco. Once you got up to speed, the slash felt more engaging and super lively through the turns and jumps. The Norco, on the other hand, felt burlier and more planted overall, though a little more effort to get up the climbs, but it sure does descend with confidence. Whenever we jumped back on the Norco, we found ourselves riding with reckless abandon, launching down the trail and staying off the brakes more. Choosing between these two bikes became very hard indeed, because on the trail, there is very little performance difference between the two. So in the end, it came down to a lot of talk about value. While the Norco is $300 more, we feel that there's a lot more you get for that $300, particularly in the drivetrain, the brakes, and the tires. We'll take the Norco.